lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. Uh, today, we're ranking the TCG exclusive archetypes. Um, I did add one in between the last time I did this. Now, uh, I screwed something up. I forgot to steam you, because that deck is terrible. Um, so for that quick amendum, that's in D tier. Now this is my personal preference. These are de like how much I like the deck personally. So we're gonna put them in to the tiers of what I like, and then we're going to rank them left to right. The highest in that tier being here, uh, being in the, in the far left, closest to the tier, and the bottom of it there, uh, because there's 22. That's right, 22, and there's five classifications. We're gonna do four in S and A. And then 5 and B through D. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, Tastinia. Oh, God. Uh, we'll put that in D. Uh, F.A. I think... I think F.A. is here. Kaijus are cool. Ashen is pretty neat. So we're putting it in here randomly just to try to kind of, like, make it all make sense. Um, Noble Knights. I've never liked Noble Knights. I don't like War Rocks either. This is going to be a hot take. Uh, Cosmos. It's a Star Wars archetype. It's probably up there. It's probably in my top four. Danger. Probably an A. Subterror is probably B. Spiral is also probably B. I love B Troopers. Uh, Plunder Patrol is one of my favorite decks of all time. I'm going to put my Uten here. Libromancer will be the final there. Because I think Dream Mirror is really neat. Or neater, I guess. What time is even B? Ugh, I don't want... Ugh. Wow, there are decks that I... You know what? I don't... It's there... Mimi Ghoul is neat. We'll put Gold Pride. Probably here. I actually really like Gold Pride. And we'll put Goaty in A. No. We'll put Goaty in B. And then we'll put Gold Pride in A. So this is kind of where I have them, but this isn't correct. Uh, we'll put that there, that there, that there. I like that. Um, I think, maybe. Let's start at the bottom. Uh, what's the best of these five, in my opinion? Let's see. I Probably this one. Um, you go to the back. You go right before that. Right before that. Let, let's do... Let's do that. Um, we'll put you there. I think I probably like my Uten the best. I think Dream Mirror is really neat. I don't think it's good, but I think it's really cool. I actually like B Trooper more than anything else in B tier. Um, Goaty is probably the bottom. Time Thief is above Spiral. Uh, Time Thief is above Sub Terror. Time Thief is above B Trooper too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. So in last place is Testinia. Um, it's in last place because it's... I literally forgot about it. I forgot it existed. I don't even know what it does. I'll be 100% honest with you. I don't even know what this deck does. Uh, next up is going to be War Rock. Um, look, War Rock is a deck that has a really cool idea. It just doesn't implement it very well. It's kind of subpar. Noble Knights is another one of those decks where, like, I love the theme and I hate the way the deck doesn't do anything. Uh, Libromancer. Uh, it's just not for me. It's a little too eh. In my humble opinion. Uh, the D tier ones I'm not going to talk a lot about because I just I don't enjoy them. Uh, Vendred. I know there's a couple of people that I've, I've worked with in the past that love this stack. Uh, I'm just not one of them. I think the artwork is neat, but I, I don't like it mechanically. I And its artwork doesn't save it enough for me. Burning Abyss. Burning Abyss is literally one of my least favorite decks of all time, and it still managed to have five decks that I disliked more than it. Isn't that impressive? And you know, so now you know I was being objective with the tier list last 
uh, in the last video because I don't like this deck at all and it's still made S tier because it's true. Uh, UA and FA are kind of hand in hand. Uh, I'm going to say that their artwork is super cool. I actually really like their play styles. It's just not good like in a competitive sense. But like, if you were taking this deck to uh, a region, uh, to a locals, or playing for fun, at, like kitchen table, backyard Yu-Gi-Oh, man, this deck would be one of the coolest things. Cause it's just super neat and it plays super different. Uh, and the same thing can be said about Dream Mirrors, honestly. Dream Mirrors and even my Utens, like all four of these decks right here, you can play these at backyard Yu-Gi-Oh, or like locally and have a really good time, just playing some good casual fun Yu-Gi-Oh kitchen table Yu-Gi-Oh, if you will. Uh, these four decks are super cool. They all play wildly different. Um, but I think they're all super neat. Next up is Goaty. Uh, Fish. Fish! This deck also plays super strange. The difference being is that this deck has this really neat mechanic of constant recursion from Banishment, which allows it to actually kind of play into the fire decks of the current format, which is neat. Uh, and has some really, really powerful effects, like Synchro Summoning on your opponent's turn. Uh, Spiral, I love the artwork. The artwork of this deck literally carries it, because mechani and mechanically it's really cool too. The deck is super cool. Um, it plays very different. It's an information-based deck. It's kind of like, it's a spy deck, so it's super cool. It's got a really great mechanic, um, and I really enjoyed it. But it's not a deck that I would pick up and play myself. Which is kind of what B is. Is. B is kind of the tier where... I'd build the deck, but I wouldn't play it super competitively. I'd more build it as like a fun, jank version. Uh, Subterror. It's a flip effect based deck. It's super neat. It's a control... I love control decks. Uh, so this deck is just super fun for me to... Like, for me. B Troopers. B Troopers are... One of my favorite decks to play in a casual setting. Um, it has seen competitive success. It is so much fun because it just plays so different. Um, it's hyper aggressive, but it has to play things like cross out because it just loses to hand traps. Time Thieves is very fun. This is one of Lucas's favorite decks, actually. Uh, this deck plays super cool because you get to rip steal cards and stuff like that. Its mechanics are super neat. I love the sentient electronics with. Uh, winder. I think it's super neat. Uh, carry. Gold Pride. Gold Pride is really cool. It pairs super well with, like, Punk and, uh, cards that require your life points to be lower than your opponent's. So, uh, this card, th this deck, super neat. Uh, I actually really like the Gold Pride cards. I wish they were a little stronger, but Gold Pride is super cool. Also, it's kind of piratey, which is neat. Uh, the Kaijus, I love the idea of the Kaijus where it's just a bunch of big animals beating each other up in the streets. Um, this, the, the, that whole thought is really neat. The danger of being based off of uh, myths is really, really fun. And I love, I absolutely love the dangers and what they did for the competitive landscape. And mechanically, they're really neat. They breathe new life into Dark World, which is historically one of my favorite decks. So, Danger, super neat. Ashen. Its play style is weird, which I like. I really dig. And I love its artwork. I wish it was better, but it just isn't, and that's kind of where we're stuck. But Ashen is super cool. Alright, so now we're in the top three. At number three, we have Mimigool. Uh, I love Mimigool. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. Do I think it's the best deck ever? No. Do I think it's going to get some support that'll make it better? Yes. I love the idea of, like, Mimics in uh, Dungeons & Dragons, d and I really love Mimics. And this is kind of like the Mimic deck. Uh, you give your opponent a bunch of traps, which is really neat. Uh, it, it's just a super fun deck. Uh, next up is Cosmo. Look, it's based on Star Wars. That's it. I don't need anything else. It's at number two because I love Star Wars that much that I had to pick the Star Wars archetype to be number two. It doesn't take number one because its play style is a little, I don't know, outdated at this point. It's super cool. 
I love the way they designed the deck. It's just not a deck that I play a whole lot of. But I love the artwork so much that I put it at number two. Uh, but it won't take number one. Number one, it's one of a kind. It's Plunder Patrol. That's my boys. I, I love Plunder Patrol. Um, the, the pirate goblins are just super cool. I love the play style. I love that it doesn't play the same way as any other uh, multifaceted deck. Uh, the only thing it's missing... So, fun fact, it has every summoning mechanic available to it except ritual summoning and archetype. So it makes it one of the few that has access to almost every summoning mechanic, which is super neat. So, I love Plunder Patrol. I think... I think it's one of the best designed TCG exclusive, if not the best designed TCG exclusive archetype. And it wasn't super strong on release. It got better over time as people discovered what it can do. Um, so I really like Plunder Patrol. I have it as my number one favorite TCG exclusive archetype. Um, so that's that. Uh, but let me know what your favorite TCG exclusive archetype is in the comment section down below. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Our next video will be my Plunder Patrol deck profile. So we'll be showing that off. It was voted on, on the, uh, voted on in the Discord. It won by a country mile. So make sure you check out the Discord. That's linked in the description down below as well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like I said, like and subscribe. And until next time, lads, good fun. Have luck.